The Ranger class in Terraria comprises of using bows and guns with a huge selection of ammunition types. Rangers are a strong class from the beginning to the end of the game, but what if we did something crazy and break the class completely? How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and today we're going to see how overpowered you can make the Ranger class in Terraria. Now before we get started, we need to explain how this video is going to work. As the title of this video states, we're going to look at how overpowered you can make the Ranger class in Terraria, which means I'll only be looking at weapons with the ranged damage type. We'll be examining what the best, most overpowered Ranger weapons, armor, accessories and items are available at 5 major stages of the game. These stages are a brand new world before your first boss fight, just before the wall of flesh battle, the start of hard mode before your first hard mode boss, just before the golem battle, and finally post moon lord victory with every item in the game available. For each section I'll explore the world and loot, farm and craft the best ranger equipment available at that stage of the game. For example, in the first stage which is pre-boss, I cannot access the dungeon and all the items within as it requires fighting Skeletron first. I also want to make it really clear at the start of this video that I'm looking for the strongest range weapons at each stage of the game. For example, I won't waste time farming for a gun if I already have a bow that is clearly stronger than it, and vice versa. Any buffs are allowed such as potions, furniture and set bonuses as long as they are available at the stage of the game that we're examining. As a lot of you know, there are literally tons of range of weapon, armor and accessory combinations in Terraria, so if during this video I suggest something that you'd do a bit differently, just let me know your ideas in the comments below. Finally, I won't be using any major bugs or glitches to obtain items earlier than you normally would be able to get them in the spirit of this challenge. We are simply looking to overpower our character using all the items available to us at each stage of the game. With that said, let's get this crazy challenge started. We begin our adventure as most people do in Terraria by destroying the nearby forest to collect tons of wood. I'm excited because there's tons of powering up opportunities available to us straight away, but before that we need to get our first weapon. Did you know that you can keep crafting wooden bows until you get a good modifier on it? Ellie bows have no knockback, so keep crafting bows until you get the demonic modifier. I make sure to craft some arrows and some wooden armor, and after collecting some gel from the slimes that spawn around me, I upgrade our wooden arrows to flaming arrows for extra damage and the on fire debuff. I'll also need to build some basic NPC housing before we leave this area as there's a few NPCs I'll need in this challenge with some of the main ones being the arms dealer and goblin tinkerer. Our next missions are to locate the crimson and the snow biome for some easy upgrades. In the crimson I want to collect a fair amount of shade wood. Luckily our wooden bow helps keep enemies at bay while we chop as fast as we can. Using the same trick as before, I craft shade wood bows until I get the demonic modifier. Did you know the shade wood bow deals a whopping 4 extra damage over the wooden bow, which is a decent power boost so early on in the game. I also use the extra shade wood for a quick armor upgrade while we're here for some extra defense before we move on to the snow biome. After finding the snow biome, I start to harvest plenty of ice blocks. I'll be using these to craft frostburn arrows which deal 2 more damage than flaming arrows and inflict the frostburn debuff. Only 28 enemies in the whole game are immune to frostburn and it deals tons of damage as well so it's worth the effort. With our upgraded equipment, it's now time to make some torches and head underground to start looting. My main goals are to get max health as soon as possible as well as plenty of mobility items such as bottles for jumping, boots and any type of grappling hook. If you're wondering, I'm playing on a small world in normal mode. A lot of equipment I need can either be crafted or dropped from mobs so a smaller world will help me explore around much faster. I'm having fun looting and exploring at this stage and grabbing everything I can as we'll need plenty of cash for reforging later in our adventure. It can also take a while to locate enough life crystals for max HP, but we'll need it for something we'll be trying very soon. I'll also quickly check the jungle for a boomstick. This weapon is fantastic for dealing with mobs underground and will help me save my better arrows for bosses and invasions. After I've got plenty of loot and max health, it's time for our next step. Back at base I purchase a bug net from the merchant and some bombs from the demolitionist. With the arms dealer moved in, I purchase some musket balls for my boomstick. If you have silver ore in your world, you can also craft silver bullets for extra damage. Unfortunately my world is tungsten, so I'll need to use an extractinator if I want to get silver. I also take this opportunity to craft some basic upgrades including a reinforced fishing pole as there's something big I need to catch very soon. With bombs in hand, I YOLO into the depths of the crimson. I'm just looking to smash some crimson hearts to enable meteorites to spawn in our world. If we can farm up some meteorite ore, I'll be one step closer to crafting a star cannon, 
which is arguably one of the strongest pre-hard mode weapons. After catching some worms and collecting more fallen stars, we finally arrive at the beach and we can relax for a bit with a spot of fishing. If you haven't guessed it yet, I'm trying to catch a reaver shark, which is roughly a 1 in 100 chance with my reinforced fishing rod and enchanted nightcrawlers. It's pretty slow going, but eventually I catch a reaver shark. While I'm at the edge of the world, I also farm some goblin scouts so I can craft a goblin battle standard. With our new reaver shark ready for mining, I quickly summon and battle the goblins before we head back underground. This will allow me to rescue the goblin tinkerer while we're exploring as we make our way to the underworld. After grabbing some potions, I start digging a halivator near our base. A meteorite lands while we're digging, so we'll go and collect the ore soon so we're one step closer to making our star cannon. I eventually find the Goblin Tinkerer and make my way over to him. I purchase a Tinkerer's Workshop and Rocket Boots for now, but we'll leave the reforging for later. As a nice bonus, there's some obsidian nearby, so I mine up a bunch of it to help me craft some Hellstone Bars. As I approach the Underworld, I drink an obsidian skin potion and jump straight into the lava. To craft a full set of Molten Armor, I only need 135 Hellstone Ore, so if I'm quick, the powerful enemies down here shouldn't bother me too much. I grab a few extra ores so I can craft a Molten Fury Bow as well. Before we head back to base, I go and search for the meteorite crash site. A combination of bombs, dynamite and platforms makes short work of the ore, and my ranged weapons are more than a match for the meteor heads. A blood moon spawns which gives me an opportunity to farm for a shark tooth necklace. This accessory is a must have for all classes as it reduces enemy defense by 5. This item gives weapons like the mini shark a massive power boost. Thankfully I had prepared for a blood moon earlier by creating an area near my base with several platforms so mobs can easily spawn. With the help of my battle potion we soon get our prize and move on. We've almost done everything a ranger can do before their first boss but there's still a few last power ups we need. Besides the standard buff potions that all classes benefit from such as iron skin, regeneration, swiftness and so on, there's a few ranger specific buffs we can get such as ammo reservation and archery. I'll put an image on screen with all the relevant combat buff potions available at this stage of the game and what fish they require. After creating our Hellstone Bars, I make the Molten Armor and Molten Fury, the strongest bow available prior to fighting a boss. I also take a moment to convert our Meteorite Ore to Bars as we'll be using them to make a Star Cannon very soon. Before I go on, I quickly build a sky bridge across my world. The Star Cannon is powerful, but Fallen Stars are hard to collect in large numbers, so I need an easy way to do it each night without taking up heaps of time. One last issue to solve is money. I need a ton of gold to reforge all of my equipment to the max, as well as purchase a mini shark for our Star Cannon. At this stage of the game, the best way to make money is simply by selling Hellstone Bars, so it's back into the lava for me. Back at base I craft tons of hellstone bars and then sell them to the merchant for heaps of gold. I then purchase two mini sharks from the arms dealer and craft one of them into a star cannon. Now comes the really expensive part, getting the absolute best modifiers on all of my equipment. I'll be taking menacing on my accessories for 20% total bonus damage, but rolling the weapon modifiers can take a lot of cash and a lot of luck. Thankfully, I can always go back and get more Hellstone ore if I run out of cash, so this process is simply a matter of time and patience. This first stage is arguably the biggest in the game in terms of power-ups available, but here's what we achieved in pre-hard mode without fighting a single boss. We have the Star Cannon, Molten Fury and Boomstick, a set of Molten Armor, and a Shark Tooth Necklace and Frost Spark Boots. You might decide to go with different accessories, but then again, there's no real Ranger specific accessories this early in the game besides the Shark Tooth Necklace that benefits all classes equally. It's time to start Stage 2, and that means we can access everything up to the Wall of Flesh battle. The first boss I want to tackle is the Queen Bee, so I make my way to the jungle and collect the resources to make a few abominations. There's a few reasons I want to fight several several queen bees now. Firstly, selling all the loot will be a nice cash boost before we start hard mode, and it will also allow the Witch Doctor NPC to move in. This is important as then I can grab the leaf wings as soon as we start hard mode. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I won't be collecting every ranged weapon for the sake of it, so for the rest of this challenge, if I skip a weapon you think should have been included, just let me know in the comments below. With several bees defeated, we make our way to the dungeon to challenge Skeletron as there's several power-ups being protected by the Dungeon Guardian. Our Star Cannon makes short work of Skeletron's hand and the Molten Fury armed with Frostburn arrows keeps the head debuffed while the Boomstick deals massive damage at close range. As you can imagine, this fight doesn't last for very long at all and with Skeletron defeated, we make our way into the dungeon. I have two goals in the dungeon. Firstly, I want to find a Cobalt Shield as Knockback can get Rangers killed quite quickly if they get surrounded. Next, I want to collect Bones to craft some Necro Armor. 
I know some of you might think that's strange, seeing as I already have Molten Armor, but Necro will give me a massive 15% bonus range damage and a 20% chance not to consume ammo, which works really well with our Star Cannon. After collecting enough bones and cobwebs, I return to base to craft a set of Necro Armor. The Traveling Merchant has also arrived, and with incredible luck, he has the ammo box for sale, further reducing my ammo consumption by 20%. I make sure to top up our ammo and buff potions, and with our ranger about as strong as they can be pre-hard mode, we make our way to the underworld to challenge the wall of flesh. This stage was a lot faster than our first one, but we got some significant upgrades with our necro armor and obsidian shield. The necro armor will also help me quickly deal with early hard mode mobs, as well as give me a big boost against the wall of flesh. After making a short runway, I hurl the guide voodoo doll into the lava and summon the giant wall to start stage 3. As expected, our star cannon shreds through the hungries as well as deals tons of damage to the eyes. We are fighting fairly aggressively so I do take a fair bit of damage but soon enough the wall is destroyed and hard mode has begun and we even got a ranger emblem on our first try which is fantastic as it saves me heaps of time farming the wall over and over again. With the witch doctor moved in I make my way straight to the jungle and purchase a pair of leaf wings. This will give me much more survivability against some of the upcoming mobs we're going to be facing. From here there's tons of upgrade options available including new weapons, armor and accessories. We'll need to get some hard mode ores to upgrade our armor and pickaxe so I take the pone ammo to the crimson and start smashing those altars. Our world ends up getting blessed with cobalt, aricalcum and titanium ore. I'm just going to mine up enough cobalt ore to make a cobalt pickaxe and then move straight on to mining aricalcum next. While searching for hard mode ores, I decide to farm up some souls of light and night while I'm at it. A good way to streamline your farming is to blow open a large area using explosives so you can quickly find mobs whilst also having plenty of room to move around. After mining enough ore, I decide to relax here for a while and just enjoy farming some mobs for extra loot while I try and get a magic quiver for from a skeleton archer. We do get a marrow eventually which gives our bow a nice power boost and soon enough a magic quiver drops which means it's time to get crafting. Back at base I visit the arms dealer to purchase silver bullets and a shotgun which is a big power boost over our boomstick. I also craft an Oricalcum anvil and pickaxe ready to mine up some titanium ore but before that I craft some keys of light and grab a few chests. Summoning Hallowed Mimics will give me a chance to get a Daedalus Stormbow which is arguably one of the strongest bows in the whole game. I can simply use the Blood Moon Arena from earlier and with my Leaf Wings the battle is fairly easy. Luckily I get the Stormbow off the first Mimic but as I've already crafted all these extra keys I'm going to farm another 4 Mimics anyway for more potions and loot. Heading back to the underworld, I begin to search for titanium ore. A full set of titanium armor as well as upgrading to a titanium forge requires 325 ore. I like to put the ore in my hotbar so I can keep track of how much ore I have left to go as I keep mining. I also stop by the underground crimson to farm up some souls of night. I can also get icor from here which will enable me to craft the insanely powerful icor bullets for my guns. If you didn't know, debuffing enemies with Icor reduces their defense by a whopping 20 points, which is insane. Lastly, I visit the surface hello and make a basic farm to collect pixie dust and unicorn horns. This is nice and relaxing as the enemies can't get me from the platforms and I'll get all the resources I need for holy arrows. I'll also make sure to fish up some prismite here to craft life force potions later on. Back at base I can see the hello has taken over and it's time to craft our final upgrades for this stage. I make a titanium forge and then turn our ore into titanium bars. I craft the ranger titanium armor which is a decent upgrade over our necro set. I then upgrade our shotgun to an onyx blaster and craft icor bullets to use with it. This will make us absolutely deadly at close range. This stage had a lot of new upgrades available to us and although it was a bit tough early on we are now armed to the absolute teeth. Our new upgrades are the Daedalus Stormbow, Onyx Blaster and Marrow with a full set of titanium armor. We have Icor Bullets and Holy Arrows as new ammo types and our new accessories are Leaf Wings, Ranger Emblem and Magic Quiver. You may like to have farmed up an Uzi with Crystal Bullets at this stage which would also have been a good combo but personally I feel Daedalus Stormbow with Holy Arrows is far stronger against most bosses. Stage 4 is here and now we can destroy some hard mode bosses. That said, the first thing I'm going to set up is a glowing mushroom farm. 
I'll need to spawn the truffle NPC and collect tons of glowing mushrooms to make shroomite armor after Plantera. Next, in the spirit of this challenge, I want to make these bosses really suffer from how overpowered we are, so we're going straight for Duke Fishron. Although a Daedalus Stormbow deals good damage, the Tsunami, a bow from Duke Fishron, is a lot more accurate and deals even more damage, so I'd love to get this weapon first thing before we fight any other bosses. The strategy with a Ranger at this stage is to blast Fishron with Icor to lower its defense and then avoid its attacks while keeping our Daedalus Stormbow aimed to it as close as possible. We manage to defeat the giant fish but we don't get the tsunami on our first try. Thankfully after our second attempt the awesome bow drops and that will make it even easier to farm more fish runs. I use up the rest of my truffle worms trying to get the fish run wings but unfortunately I don't get them. Still our leaf wings are more than enough for now. After reforging our tsunami it's time to dish out the pain to the mech bosses. The combination of all our ranged damage upgrades and tsunami is so much that the mech bosses get destroyed in mere moments. I craft the pickaxe axe and then head to the jungle looking for chlorophyte ore and life fruits. I'll need a total of 324 chlorophyte ore to make enough bars for shroomite armor. I also need tons of glowing mushrooms but the large farm we set up in space will grow them nice and fast. Slowly but surely I make my way around the jungle collecting enough life fruit to max my health and get the ore I need. Our next goal is to find a plantera bulb. I do manage to find a bulb fairly close to a large open area. After summoning plantera I slowly lead it to the arena where I open fire on the giant plant. Plantera is vulnerable to Icor, so I use my Onyx Blaster to keep it debuffed and let loose with our Tsunami and the poor plant is destroyed before it can do much damage to me. I quickly grab the Temple Key and the rest of the loot and get ready to visit the Truffle. Back in space I collect the rest of the glowing mushrooms I need and then talk to the Truffle NPC. After Plantera is defeated it sells the Auto Hammer, which is a crafting station that crafts Shroomite Bars from Chlorophyte Bars and Glowing Mushrooms. We return to base to create some Chlorophyte Bars in our forge and then place the Auto Hammer to make Shroomite Bars. The three different Shroomite Helmets relate to Rocket, Arrow and Bullet damage, so pick your favorite weapon type. We currently have so much Archer equipment that I take the Shroomite headgear to further improve the power of our arrows. This stage had plenty of upgrades for us including a set of Shroomite armor, the Tsunami and a bunch of life fruit to max out our HP. I'd like to give some honorable mentions here to the Dungeon and Frostmoon as they both have decent gun based upgrades if you prefer your ranger to focus on guns instead of bows. The chain gun from the Frost Moon with Chlorified Bullets is a good combo for example, but I still feel the Tsunami with Holy Arrows deals far more damage. This is it everyone, the final stage and everything in the game is available to us now. We begin by entering the temple to make our way to Golem. I'll loot the chest in the temple as we still have a bit of reforging ahead of us and the extra cash will sure come in useful. I'll also take some time to farm up some extra lizard power cells as Golem is an excellent boss to farm for gold and also has several useful items. After making it to the Golem chamber I set up a basic arena and get the battle started. Due to the enclosed space it's still worth defeating the Golem arms so you don't take too much damage and we can also apply Icor to increase our own damage. Our ranger is nearly completely overpowered at this stage and makes extremely short work of Golem. With our buff still active I make sure to keep fighting as fast as possible and keep that loot coming in. After picking on Golem for a little while I return to the underworld and ask the wall of flesh nicely for another ranger emblem. I try out our new stinger and it destroys the hungries with ease and then I finish it off with our tsunami. We snag our ranger emblem and return to base. I realized I still needed an Eye of Golem so I farmed a few more golems to get one. I craft an Avenger Emblem and then quickly upgrade it to a Destroyer Emblem. I swap out my boots for the Avenger Emblem for even more damage and critical strike and then reforge the accessory to Menacing for 4% more damage and head to the dungeon to visit the Cultists. I sneak up on the Cultists and blow them away with our Onyx Blaster. The Lunatic Cultist spawns and this is the first time in this challenge I've truly felt like a glass cannon. The coldest attacks hit really hard and as we're mostly focusing on maximum damage, my health drops pretty low during the battle. Still, our raw damage output is too much for the coldest and it can't take us out before we destroy it and invite the celestial pillars to invade our world. A Stardust Pillar spawns right near us so I decide to deal with it straight away. I use the usual technique of taking out the star cells but not defeating their miniature cells so they respawn faster. After the shield falls I burst down the pillar and collect the fragments. I decide to also do the vortex and solar pillars now before returning to base to get some upgrades before the moon lord. The solar pillar is annoying as always for rangers but eventually it falls and it's time for our last minute preparations. 
I'm so lucky to have just enough fragments for both the Vortex Beater and the Phantasm, so I happily craft both. I also make some clarified bullets as they work extremely well with a vortex beater and will be a good way to keep the damage on the moon lord even when I'm dodging attacks. I also set up a basic spawn point at our moon lord arena and assign the dryad to it for some minor buffs during the battle. With everything set we head on to the nebula pillar. I zoom out for the upcoming battle and try to avoid taking damage while defeating the hordes of nebula enemies. Eventually the pillar falls and I quickly grab the fragments before returning to spawn to await impending doom. The Moon Lord attacks and I start firing my Phantasm at the eyes. I immediately notice the lack of movement speed with my boots missing, so I try to hover in the air with my wings to dodge attacks a little easier. When the forehead eye opens, I try to maximize damage on it so I can take it out as fast as possible. I slowly manage to damage all three eyes and eventually the core opens, but I'm starting to take heavy damage so I flee the arena. As I fly away, I try to keep my Phantasm focused on the core and things are starting to look bad, but in an absolute clutch, we manage to defeat the Moon Lord. I'm really excited that we won, but as I return to base, I realize that how can we say we're really OP if we barely defeated the final boss? I also personally believe that mobility is just as important as damage, and I think taking off my boots accessory was a mistake in this battle for only marginally more damage. So what is the ultimate build for Rangers in Terraria? I spent some time grinding the Pillars and Moon Lord to find out. After many battles, we now have a full set of Vortex armor and an Unreal SDMG and Celebration, as well as our Phantasm. Our final accessories are Solar Wings, Destroyer Emblem, Magic Quiver, Obsidian Shield, and Frost Spark Boots with full menacing modifiers for 20% bonus damage. I fight the Moon Lord on our old Fallen Star Bridge from the start of the game and can easily fly over the Phantasmal Death Ray with our new wings. We deal significantly more damage with our Vortex armor, but here's the big discovery I made during this fight. Normally when you activate Stealth Mode with Vortex armor for a bonus 80% damage and 20% crit strike, your movement speed becomes so slow, bosses just smash you, but thanks to our boots I can actually sprint while in Stealth Mode. With this awesome combination, we can shred the core to pieces in seconds and truly give the Moon Lord the overpowered treatment. This was so much fun to max out our character at each stage of the game, and I'd love to know which class you'd like me to look at next, Melee, Mage, or Summoner. There's a voting card on screen now, so make your vote count. Also, if you would have built your Ranger another way, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I had an absolute blast making this video, and if you enjoyed it too, please smash that like button and consider subscribing for more fun videos like this. And is the most important part as always, you'll stay happy and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Days signing out. See ya!